Welcome back. Time to get this thing clean. Now I uh, just pulled the top cover off that engine there so I can get in there better. And as much as I would love just to pressure wash the entire tractor and get everything off, I am just going to concentrate on the engine. Like I said, uh, I have a little bit of doubt in the back of my mind, so I'm not going to waste my time on all the little things that don't really matter. I'm just going to clean this engine up, clean the injection pump up, the filter area and stuff, and the battery box area, just so I can try to get this thing running. Once this engine starts, then it's a full go on everything else. And there we go. Definitely not perfect, but at least I can see where all the nuts and bolts are in the wiring. So first thing I gotta tackle is getting this fuel system apart. I'll be purging right from the tank purge all the lines, new f new filters, and then on this side we are pulling this oil bath air filter apart and making sure no oil has been making it into the intake and then we'll do the engine oil, change the engine oil and then we'll move on to some electrical to see if we can get this thing running. So actually it's been a couple days now thought I'd let it dry off so uh, here we are gonna get these two big nuts off drop these canisters see what the uh, fuel looks like inside hopefully it's just old and stale and not actually gummed up in the lines so it's a little dirty in behind there sorry the lighting's bad too but Work with what we got. Get those fuel fuel filters off. I have the fuel shut off here. We're gonna drain this tank, drain all these lines. Maybe put a layer through them. And this uh, canister here, which is like a secondary fuel tank, I'm not really sure why they have it. It is tied directly from the filters right to that tank, and then straight through this line here into the injection pump. So. We'll uh, play it by ear. I did get a manual. I was able to download a full maintenance manual online. And uh, I have all my filters that I need for today. Hopefully it goes smooth. So there's a little bit of pitting inside the fuel canisters. The filters looked okay, but at some point over the years, there has been some water sitting in here. So we're going to get a little buffing tool we're going to clean up inside here and then we're going to the heads the heads that these these mount to they look pretty clean and uh, this one's this one's the worst the other one's not not bad at all i'm just going to clean that up a little bit and then we can uh, get the new filters in there She's dripping nicely and one thing i found interesting because i never even looked at these filters yet one filter just honestly looks just like a ball of twine. That's it. Now, I do see a little metal cage down in there, so if it wasn't for that, I would say that's what it was, was a ball of twine. And I see the other one's a fleet guard. Now, I didn't see a cross when I ordered the uh, filter, but I'm wondering if this FF109 is actually cheaper. So I'll, I'll take a look at that first before I bring those other two filters home because... Uh, no, cheaper is always better for me anyway so we'll let this kind of drip out for a bit the tank is open that's just the last little bit coming out and uh, move over on to the other side and we'll take the oil filter off inside that oil canister it's pristine it's awesome yes of course the oil is dirty but it is shiny no moisture been sitting in there, even at the top of this thing. So that's really good. Now we'll drain the oil pan. Oh. 
Funny me thinking I would just put a wrench on this oil plug. It uh, looks like beavers have been under here chewing on it. So, vice grips it is. So the oil's drained. And now I'm moving on to this line here. This is uh, this is the line that comes from this, I don't know what it is, a secondary fuel canister? It's directly fed from the filters. And then it goes to this canister, which feeds the injection pump. I said this is, I can see through this line in many places. So I'm just gonna take it off. See, it's just a 3 8 line. And I'm gonna go to my, uh, my work and I'm gonna make one. I don't think looks like these just is just a looks like a JIC female on this side. And this side actually looks like a pipe. So uh, we'll pull that off and get a new one made. For anyone else that might have these old uh, 700 and 800 series tractors, these are the filters you need. The two on the right are your bigger and littler fuel filters. And the one on the left is your oil filter. Nice new shiny fuel line on there. New fuel filters are in. Oil filters in. We're now filled with oil. Next thing is to pull apart the oil bath air breather. Calling this thing an oil bath filter would be generous. It's about 98% water that's in there. So I guess we're going to pull the entire canister apart and uh, wash this out. There's clumps of whatever in the bottom. And up inside, it looks like there's actually a little bit of mold growing on the edge. So I guess we're pulling the whole thing off and clean this all out. Well, I really love it when I can get a good surprise. This uh, oil bath air filter doesn't have the, the bird's nest. It actually has the original stainless steel screens. I have never seen one that someone has kept the original screens. These are a pain. I've already washed these. They're, you know, I guess fairly dirty. But uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt to wash. You need a big jug of aerosol clean them all out so almost always I've n always been replaced with the bird's nest I've never seen one with the original screens but that's all them there this is this is this is great <laughs> save me money I don't mind a little bit of extra work easy to clean no rusting even though there's a lot of water in the bottom of that but everything is stainless steel which is good they don't make them like this anymore so anyway, we'll pop this all back together and throw that air filter back on. So now with fuel filters changed, oil filter changed, new oil, the uh, oil bath air intake is now cleaned and put back together. Next step is I'm going to throw some, throw some juice to this thing, hook up the battery. The battery is dead. It's I don't know how old it is, but it ain't working. <laughs> so we're going to just hook up a booster to it and turn the ignition on and give it some time here to see if uh, anything fries. Hopefully nothing burns. Hopefully there's no shorts. Um, actually, speaking of shorts, there is not one fuse on this tractor that I can find. Nothing for the dash panel. Nothing for the lights. The starter, nothing. I can't find any. So, we'll hook her up to the old uh, battery charger, clean off the terminals, and uh, see what happens. <clears throat> so, I have my battery booster hooked up here. Now, at first, I don't want this thing to run, actually, this first try. All I want to do is I'm going to turn the power on, wait a bit to see if anything's going to fry or sizzle, 
or burn. If nothing burns, then I'll turn the ignition on. Give it some time to think. Decide if it's going to melt some wires. If that's okay, then we'll give it a try and try to turn it over. Now, I, I do... I really don't want this to start. What I want to happen, give it a good four, five, six cranks over. And then on the other side, I'm going to open up the bottom drain on the oil filter to see if some oil is actually making it up to that point. I want to make sure you're getting some oil pressure. This does have a decompression rail right here. So I'm going to open that up as well too. That uh, holds all the exhaust valves open. And I'm going to do that in hopes that it will not start. Now the fuel system is also empty, except for the lines going to the injector. There's, I didn't want to crack these lines here on the four injectors, so there is old fuel, I assume, going up to that point. But other than that, the rest of the system is empty. So we'll turn this on. I'll give her a few seconds here and make sure everything's cool. All right. Turn ignition on. Yeah, nothing moving on the dash. I'm not sure. If anything is supposed to move before it starts. I don't hear any sizzling or smell any sizzling. So let's see what happens here. We do not have enough juice to turn this thing over. Time to get a bigger booster. Put that old battery back in to help kind of regulate the power. We got the sucker cranked up. Oh, what is that? I think that's, I think it's on 110 amps. So we'll give that a couple of minutes here. Maybe not even a couple minutes. Maybe we'll just get up here and give her a try. Ugh. Hmm. It's turning over slowly, but not enough. I need more juice. There we go. Coming off that starter solenoid. Awesome. We are getting pressure. The oil pump's working and pulling up the fluid. 
and nice and clean. Good news. All right, so just got five gallons of fresh diesel in there. Now we're gonna have to prime the system, purge it all, all the air out of it. Had to download a, or print off a page of the manual that I downloaded to figure this out. It's like a seven step process to prime this thing. So we'll uh, see how it goes. I wish I had a tripod to make this easier. Then I could uh, video while I'm going through it. But I do need two hands. So I'll come back as soon as she's primed. Come on, baby. We have life. It lives. Hell yeah.
No oil leaks. We got oil pressure. Don't know if it's charging or putting out any juice, but that's for another time. Only real issue is the throttle response is next to nothing. You can go to full throttle, back down to idle, and then wait for it to hit full throttle, and then slowly come back down to idle. That fuel rail and that injection pump might be a little sticky. Not to mention there's more linkages from the throttle on the steering wheel to the throttle pedal all the way through than you can shake a stick at. It's a little over complicated. So that's it for today. Kind of clean things up. And uh, goal number two, accomplished.